Hey, what's up guys? Um, today I'm just going to fire up my generators and put a load on them, make sure that they work for normal maintenance purposes. And I thought I'd just do a quick tip or trick if you're new to generators and how to avoid ruining your sensitive electronics um, by sending the wrong or improper voltage to them. The cool thing is for this, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver and something like this, a kilowatt meter, so you can uh, see the current voltage that's running through it. And uh, let's get to it and I'll show you what's going on. All right, guys, if you're new to generators um, and powering devices, um, you might be wondering why a generator will fry your sensitive electronics. I mean, it's giving out the electricity, so everything should be fine, right? That's just wrong. It's you know, like factually wrong. So the issue is that generators are not as reliable and uh, they do not produce clean output electricity-wise like your wall outlets. So this is a mechanical device. It has its flaws and how you have it tuned will determine the type of electricity that you get as an output based on the load that you put on it. So um, for instance, if um, most electronics require uh, 60 hertz and 120 volts, if you have this tuned so that at idle you get 60 hertz, this is just running at idle, no load, you get 60 hertz and you get 120 volts, the minute you put on a load, say, um, push two sides of the toaster oven down, which is about 1500 watts, you're gonna see this drop, I'm guessing, down to about 55 hertz, maybe even lower, 53, 54, and you're probably gonna see the voltage drop down to about 115-ish. Um, so for that reason, we set this high, a little higher initially, based on the load that you're gonna put on it, and I'll get into showing you how to do that, but for instance, I have this tuned uh, for 1500 watts, um, which when I put a load on there at 1500 watts, the hertz are then about 60 and 120 volts. All right, I have my generator here at uh, idle speed right now, so 122 volts, 65 hertz, 64, 65 hertz, bounces in between there. Um, see there's no load on it no watts so I'm about to hook up a toaster you'll be able to hear it slightly bogged down and I'm gonna push one side down first of the toaster and then I will push the second side down as you can see one side is now down I have a just shy of 800 watts my Hertz has now dropped to 62 now with the other side got pushed down I now drop to 59 and a half Hertz so this generator needs just a touch of an adjustment to get up to 60 hertz, but not that big of a deal. As you can see, 1,500 watts with both sides of the toaster down, and I have 120 volts, just shy of 60 hertz. It's right where I want it, right on the sweet spot. And then once I remove the toaster, you'll be able to see the numbers bounce right back up. All right, guys, as you could see, when I had it at idle, when I had the generator at idle, I had it at about um, 65 hertz and 123 volts, and that allowed me to put a load of 1,500 watts on it. Uh, that then creates a voltage drop and whatnot, and my output at 1,500 watts became 60 hertz and 120 volts, which is what you're gonna find on most of your plugs for your electronics. That's what they are rated for, that's what they want. So this generator is tuned for that output. Not that I'm just gonna be running a toaster, but that's just an example. Um, if I would have had it set at idle for um, 60 hertz and 120 volts, as soon as I put 1500 watts on it, you would probably see this drop to 55, 54 hertz, and probably 115 or 114 volts. Um, that's not what we want. That's how we're gonna fry electronics. So you need to know ahead of time what you're gonna put on it and set this accordingly because the power that comes out of your generator is not gonna be as clean and as reliable as the uh, power that comes out of your wall outlet. So if you need to change it, now to get to the good part, um, on this side of the generator, uh, we have the exhaust, we have the valve cover with the valves underneath, we have the carburetor, air filter, and we're gonna be looking for a screw under here that um let's see if i can get it on camera here right there that screw right there that controls the rpms 
Um, and you can see the linkages here with the, um, the different springs and everything. This controls the governor. So we are going to, if you need to increase the RPMs, um, say you're at uh, 57 hertz and you need to get it up to 60 hertz because that's what everything wants to run at, um, you're going to want to turn this clockwise. And that's where the kilowatt meter, um, this thing right here, comes into play. Um, you're going to want to do quarter turns, eighth of a turn with that screw, and you're going to want to monitor what your um, hertz are, and you're going to want to get that up to 60 um, based on what you're trying to power. So if you're looking to just have it at idle, for my generator, I need to get it up to about 65 so that it runs well um, when I put a bigger load on it. If you're just going to do a TV and some lights, maybe you just need to get up to uh, like 62 hertz so that when you put that load on it, it just drops to 60 and it's normal. So you're going to have to play around with this. But again, small turns is all you want to do. You don't want to do two or three actual turns of that screw because your hertz are just going to go crazy. Your engine is going to go nuts. So smaller is better. Just a quarter of a turn, a half a turn. You know, and you're going to see huge, huge results. And once you have one of these kilowatt meters, you can monitor those in real time. Okay, so let's do a quick example. I'm going to get this generator to run at 60 hertz at idle and uh, probably be about 120 volts as well. So we hope. <laughs> and uh, let's get going with that. And I'll show you in real time how to adjust that down. And I'll show you what happens when we put a load on it, like 1500 watts and, you know, why you're gonna to wanna to adjust it a little higher at idle. Uh, let's get to that. set up and I'm going to switch it from volts to hertz and the purpose of what I'm doing here is just to show that if you had your generator perfectly tuned at idle to be 60 hertz and 120 volts what is going to happen when you put it under load. Uh, so what I'm doing in the background is I'm adjusting the screw counterclockwise and that is going to reduce the hertz or the RPMs of the engine and if I wasn't clear enough before you want to make these adjustments when your engine is under load. Um, to get it where you want it. So if you plan on powering 1500 watts, then plug 1500 watts into your generator while it's under load, adjust the governor screw to get it up to 60 hertz or down to 60 hertz, depending on where you're at. So if you put your engine under um, 1500 watt load and you're at 57 hertz, then turn the screw clockwise to bring it up to 60. And then your end result, when you ultimately unplug your 1500 watt item, is that once your engine's revving at idle, it's going to be um, naturally a lot higher than it was before. So um, just to make that clear, don't adjust things at idle, hoping to guess what the correct number should be at idle to power things properly at 60 hertz under your load. Put the load on first, adjust it while the load's there, and then you're going to get the end result of having a higher RPM at idle. Okay, now I have the engine down to about 60 hertz, and I had a mail delivery, so I had to cut the camera there. So now we are going to put the engine under load with the toaster. I'll plug this in and push one side down, followed by the, follow the next side. As you can see, I am dropping big time. So I'm now up to 1500 watts, 117 volts, I know it's hard to see, and I am at 54 hertz. So that is not good, uh, 54 hertz. Well, as you can see, and as you could hear, that's why we don't set it at idle for 60 hertz and 120 volts. Once I put that 1500 watt load on it, the Hertz dropped to what, 54, 53, and that engine was running rough. And uh, so that means the electricity that's getting to your, um, your sensitive electronics especially are going to get damaged with that. Um, and the voltage dropped as well. I think it was still 117 if I remember it right. 
um, which is not terrible by any means, <laughs> um, but it was the Hertz that's the issue. So the generator is a mechanical instrument and you need to tune it uh, based on the load you plan on putting on it. You have to determine that ahead of time and then take the steps with that uh, governor screw to uh, adjust things accordingly. So I hope this helps you out. Um, feel free to give a like, subscribe if you like, and have a great day, guys.